Men's baseball strikes out against the Mountaineers. But bowling strikes back in Louisiana. All this and more on the Penguin Rundown. Welcome back to the Penguin Rundown. I'm John Ostopowitz alongside Cameron Stubbs. And, you know, it's been a very championship-filled weekend here at, at Youngstown State. And, you know, back-to-back -back weeks, the track and field team just had four players named the Horizon League Track and Field Players of the Week, Cameron. So can you tell us about those players who were given those honors? Yeah, one last week, uh, three this week. We've just been really rolling in the track and field area this so far. Yeah, definitely with Janiah Bowers, Ty Hunt, Anthony Woods, and Zach Gray all being named those honors. And, you know, they just went to North Carolina this past weekend. And let's talk about that. As the track and field team competed at the highly anticipated NC State Rally for Relays this past week, the three-day meet took place at the Paul Durr Track and Field Facility, known as one of the biggest outdoor track events on the East Coast. On the first day of the competition, Two school records were broken by Penguin runner senior Sean Peterson set a new program record in the 1500 meter run while sophomore Hunter Christopher set a new record and personal best in the 5000 meter. On the field team, junior Dominic led the Penguins effort in the men's shot put, posting a personal best mark for a ninth place finish in the event. On the final day, junior Ty Hunt set a new YSU program record in the men's long jump which overtook former Penguin Anthony Butler's record that was previously set back in 2017. Senior Daquan Watson also set a new personal best mark in this event for the fifth best jump of the day. Running in the women's 200 meter, junior Gianna Bowers set a personal best finishing in the top three, and behind her was senior Sarithra Henderson, who came in 11th. Acting as the only YSU competitor in the hammer throw event, junior Zach Gray tossed just under 49 meters for the 38th best heave of the day. The outdoor track and field team will not be traveling far this weekend as they compete in the two-day Northeast Ohio quad in nearby Ashland, Ohio, beginning on Friday and ending on Saturday. Check out YSUsports.com for live stats and updates. The baseball team traveled to Morgantown, West Virginia last weekend for a three-game series against the Big 12 Mountaineers. On Thursday night, the Penguins came out with a bang after a two-RBI triple by junior Andre Good to take an early lead. YSU led 4-1 halfway through the ball game, but five consecutive runs by WVU would give the Mountaineers game one by a final of 6-4. Center fielder Victor Scott stole home in the seventh inning to give West Virginia the lead in the ultimate game winning run. Uh, here's what head coach Dan Berlini had to say following game one of the series. They provide a big challenge, you know, even when they're not hitting, they can, you know, they're one of the top base stealing teams in the country. They put a lot of pressure on you. And I thought we made some big pitches. John got out of a big uh, bases loaded jam, got a fly ball. We got out of that inning and held the lead. And they put, you know, a, a couple, I mean, they, they basically stole home to, to take the lead and squeeze one in at the end. On Friday, the teams played in a doubleheader where Youngstown State would unfortunately come up short in both games. In the first, WVU pitcher Ben Hampton shut down YSU offensively, throwing seven, seven innings, giving up only six hits and two earned runs. One of the earned runs came from senior Lucas Nasanti's solo home run, his first on the season. At the plate, WVU had eight hits and manufactured nine runs on seven walks. The Penguins dropped the game, dropped game two of the series nine to three. In the nightcap, it was all West Virginia as YSU only scattered three hits in the ballgame, scoring three runs. Penguins pitchers struggled with their command, allowing 11 free passes. Meanwhile, the Mountaineers were running all over the bases, stealing 11 bases in the ballgame. WVU scored 13 runs to win the game, sweeping the series against Youngstown State. Here's Coach Bertolini's comments following the doubleheader loss. Chad gave us a good quality start, really cruised really three through five. Uh, the sixth inning is kind of where they got to them, but um, you know, the second one, they just, they beat us. I mean, they just, we just didn't play well. We kicked the ball, we had five errors. Not gonna win too many games like that. The Penguins returned to the Diamond today with some tough competition taking on Michigan State, followed by Oakland throughout the weekend. Check out YSUsports.com for live stats and updates. 
The men's basketball season came to a close last Wednesday as the Penguins took an 80-71 loss to Fresno State University. The quarterfinals of the basketball classic saw the Bulldogs battle and defeat the Penguins in their first ever meeting. Youngstown State was led by junior Dwayne Cohill, who had 26 points and 8 assists, while senior Michael Akuche notched 16 points and 6 rebounds. The Bulldogs bench came to life as they outscored the Penguins bench by an outstanding 41 to 8 points. Despite having a two-point advantage at halftime, offense and defensive struggles late in the game brought the men's season to an end. This became the Penguins' third Division I postseason appearance in the past three seasons, as well as the most wins in a single season during their time in the Horizon League. Congratulations to the men's basketball team on a historic season, and congratulations to all the seniors on their successful careers. With more on both the men's and women's basketball teams and their seasons, we're going to send it over to Kyle Wills and Richie Giuliano. Thanks, guys. Welcome into the roundtable. Kyle Willis here alongside Richie Giuliano. We're going to be recapping both the men's and women's basketball teams. They had, some, they had a lot of success this past season, starting with the women's basketball team, finished 24-7, and co-regular season Horizon League champions for the first time in program history, the eighth time in program history that they, they reached the 21 plateau, and they had the sixth winningest season in program history this past year. Yeah, it was definitely a special year for Youngstown State on the women's side. And you got to give credit to head coach John Barnes. The first time he's won Horizon League Coach of the Year in his career here at Youngstown State. And, you know, he had a really difficult time in the offseason replacing 50% of his points from a year ago. Three starters. You had to replace the Horizon League Freshman of the Year, Neca Obiizer, along with Mary Dunn, who was a Horizon League honoree this past year. And uh, Mary Dunn and Neca Obiizer, two players that made big impacts on the, score, on the court in 2021. But head coach John Barnes went out, got a Lily Ritz, and we saw the impact from her this season. Yeah, Lily Ritz was really dominant for the team this year, was first team all Horizon League alongside Chelsea Olsen, who was second team. But those were two players that, that this team was going to rely heavily upon. I mean, Ritz was averaging a near double-double, and Olsen had to carry this offense and distribute the ball well. Yeah, Lily Ritz was nothing but spectacular this season for Youngstown State, scoring 16.9 points per game to go along with nine and a half rebounds, so almost a double-double every single night. Scored 20 or more in nine Horizon League games this season. Just an absolute force to be reckoned with down low. Did a really good job of using her height and positioning to create many chances down in the paint as we see here. Just even against some of the best forwards in the league, she just made it look so easy down low. And, you know, Youngstown State would not have had the season that they did without Lily Ritz offensively. Yeah, she was a big force for the team offensively. Like I said, Olsen was another force for the team. I mean, she's someone that can score 20 plus points for this club and Coach Barnes has her running in point and distributing the ball to these players, which include Ritz down low. Yeah, I mean, Chelsea Olsen had to be a leader this season, acted more as a commander with this offense, like you said, still scored over 11 points per game to go along with six rebounds. But, I mean, Chelsea Olsen, another second team All-Horizon League selection for the second time in her YSU career. And she's going to finish her Youngstown State career top 20 in program history in points, three-pointers, rebounds, the list goes on and on. She's a potential Hall of Famer here at Youngstown State. Yeah, along with the offense, they were really well defensively. And Lily Ritz was all defensive team. And another player that was part of that defensive team was, was Maddie Alba. And she was in charge of guarding the primary ball handler for any team that came across Youngstown State. And, and with that 5-5 frame, I don't think people really thought she was going to be this well defensively. No, Youngstown State prided themselves this season on defense. I mean, when you look at their on-ball defense, Maddie Alba, Horizon League all-defensive team, along with Lily Ritz, Really good, really scrappy. Just kind of uh, personifies the Youngstown grit mentality, you could say. And I mean, Maddie Alba is at the forefront of that, like you mentioned. Uh, just her ability to move quick feet, guards the best player on the team, on the opposition. I mean, you could just see her all over the place, just giving the offense a lot of havoc. So, I mean, Maddie Alba at the forefront of that. But then you got Malia Magestro, who's a great on-ball defender. And then Lily Ritz, who used her length and her size to pick up 54 steals this season. So all around, a great defensive year for YSU. Yeah, this defensive, uh, defensively, they showed a lot of grit this year. And another team that was really gritty was this men's basketball team. As they finished this year 19 and 15, they were seventh in the Rising League, but they had the most wins since the 2000-2001 season. Yeah, Youngstown State to pick up 19 wins, that's huge for this program. It's very hard to win 20 games in a single season. And head coach Jared Calhoun gave his team an opportunity to win that 20th game this past weekend as they take 
on Fresno State in that basketball classic, but just fell one game short. But uh, still a tremendous season, especially for two players in particular. Michael Lacuche, who was the fifth-year leader here on this team, and then Dwayne Cohill, two guys who were really at the forefront of the offense, scoring 14 and 13 points respectively. Two guys that started almost every single game. Dwayne Cohill, a guy that was so good getting to the basket. And when you get to the basket that many times, you're going to get fouled. And you're going to have to make your free throws. And he did just that, shooting about 84% from the free throw line, which is top five in the Horizon League this past year. And then Michael Acuche, just a guy who uses his size, a guy that's very tall, almost seven feet. And, you know, he could hammer in the nail on the offensive end, a guy that brings a lot of energy and experience to this young team. Yeah, and looking back to the beginning of the year, this team was going to look heavily on Akuche to do most of the scoring, along with Garrett Covington, who got hurt in the first couple of weeks. So obviously they were going to need to make some adjustments, and they were able to do that. Obviously, Dwayne Cohill found his home in the offense, being able to score near 20 points. And they were going to need someone to be as consistent as Covington. They were able to find that in Tevin Allison, who in the first half and second half was near the same. Yeah, he was. I mean, when you look at the first half of the season, they're scoring about the same to the second half, but the big leap for him was shooting. You know, he made a huge leap in the last month of the season, knocking in almost 50% of his shots. I mean, he made 13 threes in the last five games. So, Tevin Allison provided this team with an opportunity to make a push towards that Horizon League tournament and the championship this season. But, like I mentioned before, they just fell just short, but a winning mentality for sure for Tevin Allison, a guy who had a lot to prove coming from the University of Cumberland's, which is non-D1. And it took him a little bit to adjust to the Division I level and, you know, the speed of the game. But once he got used to it, he shined as well. Yeah, and looking ahead to next year, obviously they're going to need to fill in some, some gaps. Obviously, Aquache is not going to be back next year as he used all of his years of eligibility. And another player that we know won't be coming back is Garrett Covington, who we know has entered the, the transfer portal. Yeah. He won't be back with one year of eligibility. So, I mean, besides those two players, majority of the team is coming back next year, along with the women's basketball team. We know Olsen's not going to be back next year as she used all of her years of eligibility. And there's already one or two players from that team that has entered the portal. But looking ahead as of right now, most of these teams are intact in coming next year. Yeah, they are. I mean, when you got Dwayne Cohill for the men, who's one of the best scorers in the league, a leader, guy who brings a lot of energy to the gymnasium. And then on the other side, you got Lily Ritz, a first team All Horizon League selection along with Matty Albaugh, who is the Horizon League defensive team honoree this year. A lot of good names coming back for the Youngstown State programs on both sides, on the men and women. And both of these teams now have winning ways, right? I mean, the women won 24 games. They know what it's like to win now. And same with the men. They won 19. They know what it's like to win. So definitely next season uh, is going to be a big year for the, these two programs. How can they reload from a year ago? Well, I'm looking forward to see how both these teams reload into next year, but that'll wrap it up for us here at the Roundtable. I'm Kyle with alongside Richie Giuliano. We wish both teams nothing but a safe and healthy offseason. Let's send it back to Cameron and John. Thank you, Kyle and Richie. And now for bowling, as they traveled to the Colonial Bowling Lanes in Harahan, Louisiana this past weekend, competing as the fourth seed in the Southland Bowling League Championship. The girls played strong Friday night, going undefeated on the day. It was a hard fought. It was hard fought in their individual individual play against fifth seeded Louisiana Tech and top seeded Sam Houston, but they prevailed, averaging a 212.2 score in scoring, in topping both two to one in mega matches. Senior Senior Emma Wren carried the highest average of the night for the Penguins at 246.5. This landed the team into the winners bracket final. Bringing them into Saturday, bringing them into Saturday to battle their first team of the day, second-seeded Vanderbilt, for a chance at claiming a spot in the conference championship match. They took their chance at heading in. They took their chance at heading in for a title match, but fell short to Vanderbilt, two to one overall. The two teams were locked head-to-head -head in a mega match format, just as the day before. But the Commodores scrounged a win. The ladies kept it close for the second round of the Bakers, but dropped a close contest on the night by just nine pins, ending their day in an unfortunate defeat. The team recollected their thoughts and walked into Sunday morning rearing for strikes. For the second time, the Penguins took on Louisiana Tech in an, in an elimination round, moving them onto a rematch with the Commodores. However, they were once again bested by Vanderbilt this time 2-0. 
Vanderbilt would take the conference crown for the second straight season. This is still a win for the ladies, being their best finish at the conference tournament in program history. Placing second on the team, placing second, the team took the runner-up position with both Wren and redshirt senior Emma Dockery being named to the all-tournament team. This puts them as the first Penguins to ever earn this distinction at the conference level. Congrats to the ladies. The team will find out today at 4 p.m. if they qualify for the NCAA regionals. Log on to NCAA.com to watch the live stream of the selection show. The men's tennis team had a very successful weekend, topping two Horizon League opponents in the YSU Indoor Tennis Center. In the first match against Cleveland State, the Penguins came from behind at 3-1 to defeat the Vikings, giving them their first league loss in nearly four years. Wins in singles matches by freshman Harry Falzas, freshman Clement, Clement Mangai, sophomore David Alvarez Moreno, and junior Lorentu Monachescu helped Youngstown State back in the victory. Two days later, the Penguins defeated another Horizon League opponent in the Northern Kentucky Norse by a final of 5-2. YSU won three straight singles following a tied 1-1 score to clinch the victory. Monachescu, main guy, Falzas, and Morenu won four of the six singles matches, while doubles teams of Monachescu and Falzas and junior Will Everett and sophomore Pena Ibanas won the doubles match point. The Penguins are now 2-0 in the Horizon League and will play the remainder of their season in league competition. The men's tennis team will be traveling back on the road this weekend, competing in, Ch in Chicago against UIC on Saturday and in Indianapolis against IUPUI on Sunday. The lacrosse team is coming off of a week of hardships as the team endured two losses both at home and on the road. On Wednesday, Youngstown State hosted the Robert Morris Colonials, where they struggled offensively, losing the battle 18-7. Fifth-year graduate student Ali Corrin scored a tie with a total of four goals in seven shots. In the second half, while freshman standout Natalie Calandra Ryan earned another multi-goal performance against the Colonials in her 10th straight game. Fifth-year graduate student Savannah Clark, Savannah Clark grossed a total of 17 saves out of 35 shots, giving her the record for the second most saves in one game for the young program. On Sunday, the team traveled to Indianapolis to face off against the Butler Bulldogs, where they took their second loss of the week at, the, at Victory Field. Corrin led the Penguins offense for three consecutive competi competitions, giving YSU one tie and a total of four goals on five shots. Calandra Ryan used her multi-goal outings for the 11th, grade, 11th game of this year, scoring a total of three goals. Following the first quarter, the team could not regain their momentum and dropped, dropped the contest 12-9. Up next, the lacrosse team will host at Farmers National Bank Field against Central Michigan this Saturday at 1 p.m. And now for, uh, now for the play of the week, let's toss it over to Katie rogers Vidala. Thanks, guys. As we mentioned earlier, the men's basketball team finished their postseason route against Fresno State, but there was one particular play at the beginning of the game by Shamar Rattan Mays that we chose for this week's play of the week. Let's take a look at it. Shamar gets a pass from Jameer in death corner and drills a three. Let's take another look. We'll see it in slow-mo. Slow -mo. He is off balance on one foot. Not only does he, is he able to get it off above a defender, but he still manages to drill it. What great balance by Shamar, and congrats to him on getting this week's play of the week. And we're going to send it back to Cameron and John. Thank you, Katie. That is all the time we have today on the Penguin Rundown. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Penguin Rundown Run on Twitter and Instagram. Until next time, Penguin Nation, I'm John Ostopowitz. And I'm Cameron Stubbs. And we'll see you again.